one of the things that you have is you want to often interact with data and you can use your files for that as well i think if you want to look at files and storing data for your app that's a good idea so that you can look at okay let's load it in as json and then uh, provide that to your users and then when you close your app you might store it uh, again in the, in the same file so you might have static configuration of your thing but sometimes you might want to actually configure it dynamically so you can for example have data like this okay we have different kinds of things that we have in our jars we could be in an m m jar has certain image and has certain properties etc and you can of course do that in json as well you can see that json is structured a little bit differently and works a little bit differently than this java so or, or this xml sorry you see in xml we have uh things like we have tags everywhere open and close so it can get a little bit verbose in that sense but it has certain uh properties uh that make it easy to handle as well to have all those tags and this is what json would look like and when you look at a website one of the things you are often going to see is that people try to optimize the data that they are doing and they also don't want to say this is pr uh, pretty printed json that is very good for humans but computers don't care so a lot of times when people generate JSON, they don't do any of that. And they present you with something like this, which is basically all the white space left out, except the white space in the properties itself. So your, your programs will handle this just the same as if there are spaces, but it's a little bit more compact. Saves a tiny, tiny bit of data over the wire. Compression works really well. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the data over the wire, but people do that. So how can we use JSON? So you can do it for something like, okay, we want to have petition. So this petition data by the government is actually open source. It's open access. You can actually get the underlying data. Uh, so what they did, for example, in uh, this on this website, is to actually analyze this data and make this graph from it and then you get uh, data such such as this and yes it's a little bit compact but you can also have an application that says okay how many people in Bournemouth West did that or Bournemouth East did that you get the idea so and in particular, what we also want to have the ability is in uh, Python and in Flask is the ability to actually get our data. So what we want to do here is to check our uh, so uh, our program and then see okay we can we actually have this request object available to us where we can get the arguments of the request and then get this get property so if you post something it will be available as these arguments you can then use that uh, that set the guest from the argument set uh, and then use check whether it's correct and we set the outcome and then we set here in the template we have this message property remember the template had this message that it wanted to display if it had a value this is how you do that so you say okay message equals outcome in here we have a an additional parameter to our function 